Hi, welcome to a very special edition of Inspire You. Today I will be speaking with playwright Stephen Foster, actress Valerie Shalosky, and director Paul Jimziak. There is a production of Stephen Foster's Legends and Bridge coming up on April 30th and May 1st, a virtual performance. I can't wait to talk to the three of them to know more about this magical and interesting play showcasing Hollywood legends Joan Crawford, Betty Davis, and Judy Garland. So let's get going. Here we go. Well, this is not the big screen epic that we're all used to. This is a small independent film with an independent producer. But if it's done right and we're all in it, it will make us a fortune. Tell me about my character. I want to play someone with balls. And what about me? I want to play a bitch. Oh, ladies. <laughs> ladies, you just have to trust me. <laughs> Miss Crawford, I'd rather cut off my friggin' arm. Oh, take it easy, Miss Davis. This is going to be huge. It's going to be bigger than Clark's. <gasps> Hi, Stephen Foster. How are you? I'm wonderful, Eugene Magical Ebner. <laughs> I love it. You're pure magic. Today, I am excited to have you on because you are an outstanding playwright. You're so versatile. And you have this show called Legends and Bridge. And you have, it's coming out April 30th and May 1st. It's streaming. You have an outstanding cast, and we're going to be talking to the director and the one that's playing Joan Crawford soon. But what I love before we talk is that it's a comedy fusion of feud meets Judy. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this. Tell me, what is this all about? Well, it's it was inspired after um, I wrote a show or co-wrote a show called Deve Analysis, which was about uh, Bette Midler. Liza Minnelli, Karen Carpenter, and Judy Garland yes. in sort of this screwed up lecture. And I wrote it with my friend, Scott Wilkerson. And after that show, um, I didn't really know what to do next. And this idea just popped into my head that said, it was the title, it said Legends and Bridge. And I saw an image of Betty Davis, Judy Garland, and um, Joan Crawford. Right. Sitting around a card table, playing bridge, smoking cigarettes, <laughs> and that. And at the time, I had only known about Judy Garland. I knew nothing about Joan Crawford and uh, Betty Davis, except Mommy Dearest, mm -hmm. but very little. Mm -hmm. um, and I was originally going to play Judy Garland because that's all I had known from um, Deep Analysis. And so I sat down and I started writing it. And it originally was, they were all working at the studio system still. So it was going to be in the 40s. And as I started to do research on Joan Crawford and Betty Davis, I realized that they had all this history after they made Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Mm -hmm. Ellen had all this tragic history, as I knew, after right. she got fired from CBS. So I decided to just make it in 1965 and them to be washed up and the idea of Joan Crawford creating a comeback vehicle for them came into my mind. So it was all sort of a conglomerate of my years of working in drag, my years of working in theater, and that's how it all came about in the writing. Oh, I just think it's so clever. And as you know, having those three magical, great Hollywood stars, big time classic stars, and meshing them together. And I love how you took it back into the time period of 1965, because so many people, whether they were around in that time or later on, these are the greats. And I think it's a really cool concept. And so I want to applaud you for that. I love that. It's magical. And and old is new again. Yes. I'm, you know, I mean, with I mean, I wrote this long before uh, Ryan Murphy's feud. I wrote this long before um, the play that um, Judy was based on, uh, which I forget the title of. Um, I I wrote this years before that. 
So my 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 ideas are are all they're all they all seem to like be now in the universe. The, right, these, these, like it's catching up. Yeah, yeah, like the yeah. stuff that Scott Wilkerson and I wrote in Deep Analysis is now like getting in the world. It, right, it's, 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 and and I love old Hollywood. I love old Hollywood. I love history. I love theatrics. So this show is all of that stuff. And I also love games. I love sitting around playing board games. So that's part of the gestalt as well, is because these women play card games with each other. They play trick games with each other. Yeah. So that's part of the energy behind it as well. I love it. Well, I'm really glad you're on today with me, but we're, we know coming up now, we have the director and also one of the stars who's playing Joan Crawford. So I'm actually going to now bring them in in a little bit and talk with them. But I want to congratulate you. And I will have all the information listed here of how they can view it, where to go. And uh, just thank you for putting so much magic and creativity out into the world and for being you and for shining and for not giving up because you're extremely talented, clever, and I like how you blend. Like you said, you blend things that are passionate for you, that you enjoy, and you create this for the rest of us. So thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Eugene. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey, Paul, how are you? Thanks for joining me today. Good. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So you are directing Legends and Bridge, which is written by the great Stephen Foster. And we've already heard a little bit about the story and the plot between these three magical Hollywood legends sitting around playing bridge, right? Creating their own stories. What is it like for you directing something like this? Have you always been intrigued by these great women from our past and these Hollywood stars? Oh, I love these women. I mean, especially Judy Garland, you know, growing up, I was an 80s baby. So, yeah. you know, you know, being introduced to Wizard of Oz and seeing Judy Garland as Dorothy and then just following her through her, you know, through her life and then, you know, inter getting introduced to Liza Minnelli, you know. So, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I love the oldies you know I, I i'm an old soul i guess i call it yeah so. i love that i think i am too my question for you as a director though is it different for you now that we're in such a virtual world is it is it more challenging to direct virtually than in person in, in sense in, in a theater or well, honestly i mean acting is acting right. um i mean we've for the past year because of the pandemic we have done one show a month which is a lot yeah, you can do more. You know, between, yeah. Yeah, you can do so much more, you know, and, and it's a great time because if you mess up, you just stop and retake, you know, right. there's not a lot of stress of make sure I have my lines 100%. You know, we all want to be 100%, but filming gives you that lead way to be able to get the actual look and, and you know, flow that you really want. That's and, you know, when I first met Steven, yeah, when I first met Steven, it was uh, back in August, August, September, he messaged my theater company talking about the green room. All right. So, I met. mean, yeah, we put up. So we put up the green room back in October of 2020 and it was a hit. It was it was amazing. Um, and I'm I just I'm a big fan of Steven and Chuck, both of them. Their work is amazing. It is very. So um, he pitched Legends and Bridge and I was like, I'm on that. I was like, you know, 1965, we got, you know, we got these legends going on. I'm down for it. And then when I started reading the script more and more, because I just don't read it once. I read it at least 50 times to actually understand everything that's going on to know what we need to do. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to say to you, so out of those three women, even though I know you're a man biologically, <laughs> but out of those three women, who do you think you would be most drawn to hanging out with if they were still currently living? Who would you want to go have lunch with? That would be hard. <laughs> I know, I know. Because they all, they're all so different and they, they're all so unique. So like, what day is it? You know, what am I feeling right. that day? You're like, wait a minute, right. Yeah. yeah, I understand. That's, that's true. But, uh, that's a great response because they're all uniquely wonderful, different and were. And, in, and you know, because you got... Yeah, I mean, they really range from their talents. 
So I really thank you for okay. spending some time today with me, Paul. I'm actually now going to bring on Val, who's playing Joan Crawford, so we can talk to her about her experience. So thank you, and I wish you great success on April 30th and May 1st. Perfect. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, and, it was nice uh, to meet you, too. We'll you. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Right. Hi, Val. How are you? Marvelous. Or should I call you Miss Crawford? That would be proper, yes, it would be. Miss Crawford, <laughs> we don't know each other well yet. Right? So what is it like for you? You know, I've been talking to Stephen, the playwright, Paul, the director. You're playing the great Joan Crawford. First, I guess my first question is, have, were you always a fan of hers? Have you always appreciated Joan Crawford? Or, or is she someone that you went, oh, she's okay? She's one of the greats. Right. Seriously, she worked her ass off, literally. Yes. Really did work hard at it. Um, I mean, she, she survived going from, you know, the silent pictures to talkies. Mm -hmm. You know, she was versatile, hardworking, and then everything kind of quit in the 50s. Because seriously, um, the way pictures were being made mm -hmm. and how everything was done totally changed i agree with you on that most people didn't survive that right and she you're right she was a trailblazer she was a fighter in a way and in hollywood at that time especially for women she, what she was given and did the best she could with it and then she fought back to try to get more right do you yeah. feel in this particular play that represents her do you bring that into this or is this a little more comical <laughs> It's, it's a bit farcical. It really is. It's, it's funny because it brings all those things that, you know, most people are familiar with, with um, the different characters, you know, their, their essence and that's been projected out there. True. But then, you know, Joan Crawford had an abusive childhood. Yes. Yeah. And she had a very difficult time. And then she went off on her own and rebuilt her, her whole persona several times. Right. So she was a survivor. But we all know that people who have been abused tend to continue that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just is. Yeah, I agree with you, and it, it's just like a pattern. Yeah, there are times when, when, you know, she comes a little bit unhinged, and you see some of that, um, but it's all, it's all about the mix of the three. Right, Seriously. which is brilliant. Is three, it's of brilliant. three of us. Oh, my God, how did he, I, I am just amazed at Stephen putting all of this in, and there's all little bits of, this and that that they talk about, about little bits of their characters, like um, Joan had an outfit and a, a persona known as the Queen Bee. So there's even that little hinge in there from Judy. Yeah, which I love because think about, okay, so not only does this introduce to people that might not know that much about the three of them, and it brings it into a different, you know, humorous scenario. And the time period, going back to 1965, bringing them there, it, 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 you know, it's almost like current. I I was 10. <laughs> right? Exactly. So that must be really interesting for you, too. But the thing yeah, that I love about it is that it's, it's bringing it up to people that might find it intriguing that want to know more, but then people that have loved all three or maybe one of them in particular, they'll catch mm -hmm. those little nuances. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and, and nowadays, especially virtually, there's so much out there. But this I find to be very unique. And that's what I love about Stephen as a playwright. Because like you said, he's very clever. Oh, God. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And to I be able to have these three women together. I, I, you know, well, yeah. Thank well, God I'm, I'm over blushing because there are things I do on stage that might make me blush 15 years ago. <laughs> Well, we can't wait for that. See, that's that's a good little teaser right there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
Would Joan have been your first choice if you got to meet one of these three to go have lunch or dinner with in an alternate universe? Would it be her? Knowing what I know about Joan, because I had to do some research, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to Betty. You would? I want oh, right, to because of the whole, yeah, the feud yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Knowing what I have known and kind of intuitively figure out yeah. um, from reading, um, yeah, I'd like to meet Betty. Yeah, that would be so. Questions about Joan. Yeah, I like that. Well, see, and so this is perfect because you're playing alongside Betty very soon. There's one other little thing you should okay. probably know. Okay. Three of us who play this are all friends, too. Oh, you're so all friends in real life? And we've worked together before. Oh, I did not but see. But not all of us on stage at the same time. So this is a treat for us all, too. Oh, this is awesome. So you already have connection. And I think from my personal experience, and you might agree, obviously, especially now, when you already have connection with people that are, you're going to be creating and acting with, I think that it can only make it better. Oh, God, yeah. Because you already, oh, you're already comfortable, you know? Oh, God, yeah. And, and, and like afterwards, it's like, don't step on my line, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And then the real, the real true diva comes out. Betty, she says, you step in my life. Don't step in my life, bitch. <laughs> I love that. Well, I can't wait. And everyone, please check this out. This is going to be amazing. So thank you, Val, for spending time okay. with me today.